Sometimes trig identities can look complicated, but then when you actually try to deconstruct them, they end up seeming pretty easy. Here's an example. You have sine theta minus cos theta all squared. What does it mean to square something? Well, it means you multiply it by itself. So I'm going to rewrite my left-hand side, expanding the square out. Now this is something minus something times something minus something. That's two things times two things. Two times two, that's four. Let's multiply the first times the first. That gives me sine squared when I do sine times sine. I have sine times negative cos. That's minus sine theta cos theta. I'm just ramming those together. We always write sine before cos, by the way. I've just never seen it written the other way. I guess it's a convention. Negative cos times sine is negative sine theta cos theta. Notice, even though this was cos times sine, sine times cos is the same thing. Just like 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4. Then I have negative cos theta minus another, or times another negative cos theta. That gives me plus cos squared theta. Cool. Now, I'm going to collect these terms in a very clever way, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to put my sine squared theta plus cos squared theta together right here at the beginning. But I'm also doing that and collecting those because I noticed that these are like terms. We have a minus sine theta cos theta and another minus sine theta cos theta. So how many sine theta cos thetas am I minusing in the end? The answer is I'm subtracting two of them. See, one, two, both getting minus. Now that already matches something that's on the right-hand side of this equation. What we need to do is to turn this into one. Hmm, well, lucky for us, sine squared plus cos squared of any angle will equal one. That's called the Pythagorean identity, and you best get comfortable with it if you're handling trig identities. So what I've got here is I've multiplied this out, collected my like terms, and used the Pythagorean identity to get my left-hand side to equal the right-hand side of that equation. Beautiful. So left side equals right side, and more importantly, if you take the sine of an angle, subtract the cosine of that angle, and then square your answer, you'll get the same as if you subtract two sine theta cos thetas away from one. Wow, sounds complicated, and uh, I don't know if you'd ever actually use that in the real world, but hey, this trig identity is solved. Best of luck.